My name is Ann Evans and I'm archivist and curator here at the Springs Close Family Archives at the White Homestead in Fort Mill. This is the ancestral home of Colonel Elliot White Springs of uh, Springs Industries. He was a World War I flying ace as well as a renowned writer. And throughout the house we have lots of family artifacts and things that tell the story of his life and of his ancestors' life. The house itself was built um, between 1831 and 1834, with the contract being signed by Thomas Hoover, the builder from Yorkville. It is on the National Register of Historic Places. Uh, as of 1989, it's classed as a federal style structure, though it does have the Flemish bond brick pattern. Um, it's also on the National Register, uh, aside from its unique architectural style for the place and period, uh, because it is the last meeting of the Confederate cabinet and that is a fact that Samuel Elliott White was very proud of it being a part of history. He loved history and he was very part of, proud of that. Of course he was also himself a Confederate soldier and he was uh, um, an admirer of the cabinet and these gentlemen of uh, high esteem so it would have been quite a feather in the cap to to have the um, Confederate cabinet at your home. So uh, just sort of um, the personalities at the time, that was, it was like having the president at your house. And indeed it was the president of the Confederacy, even though it was a fleeting cabinet <laughs> from the uh, Stoneman's writers. Uh, it's also on the National Register because of Colonel Elliot White Springs being a World War I flying ace. He was ranked fifth. And as a renowned writer, too, he was, uh, during the 20s and 30s, he was renowned for uh, his World War I uh, stories, fiction, based on his experiences in, in World War I. The most popular, of course, being on uh, Warbird's Diary of an Unknown Aviator. Um, and then, of course, he did several others, and he even did three screenplays, with one of them starring Humphrey Bogart. So he was quite a uh, jet setter during his early years. But that's our claim to fame. <laughs>
as close as could be, but Lena, who lives in New Jersey, has, uh, she was nine years old when I was born. So I was the closest, she was the closest one to me. At that time, uh, I guess I was five when my oldest sister got married and Mary Lee is her name. Mary Lee was the oldest. I.B. or Irene was the next oldest. And the only boy, John Edward Patterson came in after Irene. And next was Ruth came after John and then Lena and then me. My mother and father worked for Colonel and Mrs. Elliot White Springs for over 30 some years. And I'm sure some of the things that our parents uh, passed on to us came from just working in that environment. They were not educated with schooling. I think my mom was and dad both probably was educated only for the first four years, maybe fourth grade or fifth grade. And of course, they attended a high school after they moved to Paradise. There was George Fish High School there, and mom and dad were very, very um, active in the community. And they, of course, went to after work kind of school, night school, and that's how they educated themselves as well. But most of their education came from traveling with the Colonel and Mrs. Springs. I remember as a young uh, child how Colonel Springs and my dad would uh, come back from visiting the cotton mills, flying the airplane, and they would buzz the house and we'd be in the yard playing. We'd look up and see dad and the Colonel. And I believe it was a biplane. I think we could see them sitting in the cockpit. And we'd talk about those kinds of things. And of course, those, those days were the good old days. In 1971, Bob Bryant, one of Willie's oldest friends, paid him a visit at his home in Fort Mill. Bryant was co-authoring stories that ran in both the Fort Mill Times and the state newspaper in Columbia, South Carolina that highlighted South Carolina aviation pioneers. During the interview, Bob and Willie reminisced of the good old days when Elliot taught them how to fly. In the 1920s, Bryant gave Elliot motorcycle riding lessons and in return, he got flight instructions. The Rock Hill, South Carolina native would later go on to set two world records in long distance flying. The first one was in 1932 from Rock Hill to Miami, then again in 1938 from Miami to Camden, New Jersey. Willie, on the other hand, got his flying training through weekly trips with Elliot to cotton mills located in upstate South Carolina. When the articles appeared in Fort Mill Times on Thursday, August 26, 1971, Bob is quoted as stating, Mr. Patterson could have been America's first black certified pilot if he had wanted to. For years, Willie served as Colonel Springs' contact man. That is, when Elliot would yell contact, Willie would spin the propeller to start the engine. He was much a part of aviation history in South Carolina as if he had been a certified pilot. Willie is stated also in that particular article as saying, We went down to Lancaster one Sunday morning in one of the Colonel's planes and we got ready to come back in a different plane. Colonel Springs pulled the plane just off the ground. Then he said to Willie, Willie, take us home. Willie remembered the flight as a smooth one. We took off from the cotton mill in Lancaster, headed west towards the Catawba River, then north towards Fort Mill. He followed a wire line into Fort Mill and on to the homestead. As Willie brought the plane over the Colonel's house, he turned to Springs and said, Colonel Springs, I believe I'd rather you take it down this time. Willie remembered that Springs executed a turn just as he had thought about doing. He brought the plane down just as he had in mind doing it, but as Willie stated, I felt safer letting him do it. 